And we have two different examples for conditional logic. Okay, the first one is an example where we want to do something different based upon the number of records that are retrieved. So if the request returns no records, we want to do one thing. If it has records, we want to do a different thing. And we can do that in the scope of a script using the condition SQL command, which is a very straightforward um, command that will query a file and we're kind of hard coding it. So we return a one if there's records and, and not a one if, it, if there are no records. The first thing we have to do is take our view that is our control that determines if there's records, what we do. And we take that, and in this case, that's our execute on that first line. And we take it view one and we say, you know, run this and build a file. And the reason I need to do that is because I need to run my condition SQL over that file. And so then I start my conditional logic and I say, if the condition SQL selects a one from my file in QTemp, well, then I'm going to display view two. And then I have my else, which means, okay, if that condition SQL wasn't true, then I'm going to display view three. So I'm only going to run view two if there's records, and I'm going to run view three when there aren't records. With an if statement inside of a script, you do have to end it with an end if. So that's pretty straightforward. And it's the beauty of that condition SQL that allows us to easily uh, determine if there's records or not. Sometimes you need to do conditional logic based upon what your user keys in. And I'm really excited about this example because uh, we actually had a customer um, call in this week and they had their script practically created, the bow was on it, and they were just missing a couple of quotes. So it was using this exact same concept. So I'm very excited to share this with you because it does seem like it's a very um, useful um, tool to have in, in your toolbox. In our example here, we're going to prompt um, the user for a couple things. We wanna know whether or not they want a detail report and, and we're gonna ask them, would you like a detail report? And they're gonna either answer yes or no. We're gonna make our prompt um, airtight so that they can only key in a Y or an N. We're not gonna let them key in every letter of the alphabet. And that's pretty straightforward to do as well on, on any prompt within SQL. Then, if they say they want a detail report, we're gonna run the detail report with a date range that they've provided. If they don't want a detail report, we're gonna run the summary level report with the same date range. But we're gonna prompt them upfront for the question about detail or not and the, the date range. So it's very easy to take a date range and to pass it to multiple commands inside of a, a script so that you don't have to continually reprompt the user for the same dates. So what we do here, again, it's an, an if that's kind of sandwiched in between an if and an end if. And what we say this time is condition. And we're comparing a variable that the user provides against a constant. So the ampersand u1 is a variable that we've defined in the variable tab in the script. And if that is an n, meaning they don't want a detail report, we're going to run that first report. Um, which is just a really a summary level report with the date range that the user provided. This is an old, uh, now I want to say old, but a very trusty host report. Um, and we put out Q star none just in case it's run um, at a command line or um, in the green screen environment or even from viewpoint because it will delete this full file when it's done. Then we say else run this other report. Same date range, it, they're named very similarly, different by one letter using the same date range and then we do the end if now let me explain on this condition statement with this variable what's going on there because it looks like i've got way too much going on and the variable name is just amper ampersand u1 and again that will either be a y or an n because that is a character constant we need to ensure that that is enclosed in quotes within our script when we enclose a variable in quotes in the script, we use two ampersands because the two ampersands in a quoted string ensure substitution. And so basically when this runs, it's, it's either saying n equals n or it's going to say y equals n and we're going to know whether it's true or not and whether we jump to the else clause or not. All right, so that is conditional logic.